What's up, guys? Apple Fanatic here. Um, and today I will be making another Android video, and this one will be on ROMs and kernels my Droid Incredible have used in some of my favorite. I haven't made a video in a while, mainly because I've been on vacation, but um, I'm going to be starting up my bi weekly tech review or tech video, which will be going every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or a variation of those three days and then a tutorial coming in on the weekend so let's get started uh, the phone I will be using will be a Droid Incredible the reason you see this picture in the background is because my notes are on my external monitor and I wanted to keep it a little more interesting than just a beach so I put a cat picture in the back cat pictures I personally don't like but I know a lot of people like them so thought I'd do this so let's get started the first ROM um, this isn't going in any particular order. They're going to be going from sense to um, nonsense ROMs. However, they're not going to be my favorite ROM. I will actually tell you what my favorite ROM is right now. It is the, um, actually, you know what? I'll say that to the end. So the first ROM I'm going to be talking about is Skyraider Sense 4.0. Um, Skyraider is a very popular ROM used by a lot of people that have rooted. Um, and like the sense that HTC incorporates with their flavor of Android but at the same time wants more open source and wants to be able to customize because with the uh, sense comes with HTC even if you have a root it's not as customizable as a lot of people would like you can change the picture I mean you can change the uh, skins and you can change the ability like the, the feel however it's pretty much the same um, throughout but with Skyraider it adds a lot of really nice features with um, with the notification menu, you have added shortcuts, and <clears throat> you can also change um, just the layout of certain things. Where in HTC's Sense stock, you can change it in it essentially. Um, it's also adds free Wi-Fi tethering, which is a nice feature, and it's just a really, really nice, solid ROM. Only thing I don't like about it, um, well, there's actually a couple things I don't like about it, but the one big thing I don't like about it is they don't update a lot. Um, they might add minor updates, but there's not a lot added. So while it is a nice stable ROM, there's no release candidate, so you can't get a, a flavor or a, a taste of what it's gonna be like. So you're kind of stuck going no or going everything. And it's easy it is to flash a ROM. You would like to know what you're gonna get yourself into other before you know flashing the ROM. The other thing that I'm not 100% happy about, I guess you could say is the fact that Skyraider Sense 4.0, even though it is running HTC's new 2.0 Sense, which it adds a lot of new features that 1.0 didn't have initially, it's still running on Froyo. And it has a gingerbread themed, but the device itself, or the operating system, yeah, the ROM itself isn't 2.3, isn't it's 2.2, so you have some power management, the power management isn't as good, and they just don't have a lot of the features that 2. Point, or none of the features that 2.3 came with. I'm not going to get into what 2.3 added because that will be in a different video. But, you know, Skyraider out of a 10, I'd give it, Skyraider Sense 4.0, I'd give it maybe a 7.5, 8. It's a steady, it's, it's a good ROM, um, customizable, not as customizable as a nonsense UI, but it's still a very solid ROM and it is very, it's not buggy. Whereas if you were to get a ROM that say had, had night leaves or candidates, you might find a bug, but you'd also be able to taste test it out before you got the final version. The next ROM I'd like to talk about is Warm Z.2.2. Warm Z.2.2. I'm sorry, I typed it in wrong. It's Warm Z 2.2. All the links will be in the description. This is another sense ROM that I am currently running. And I have to say, it is probably my favorite Sense ROM that I currently have had. Um, it is very stock 2.0 Sense feel um, with Warm Z's own spin on it. Whereas Skyraider was IHRP, I don't even know the developer's spin on it, but it was more, you know, stock. It didn't really have anything added. Whereas Warm Z has taken 2.0 kept all the widgets where um, at some point Skyraider got rid of a lot of 2.0 widgets which wasn't a big thing I mean which wasn't I wasn't really happy about um, but Warmzy kept all of their um, 
all the HCC widgets, all the HCC gadgets. Um, so Warm Z's 2.2 is pretty much since 2.0 with a different, a little bit of a flavored added to, by Warm Z himself. Um, this and once again is running Froyo. However, this is um, and this is also themed. 2.2, which is a uh, theme gingerbread, which I'm not entirely happy about, but um, the customability options and the the, la the the speed and just everything that you have the ability to do makes up for the fact it's not running 2.3. Um, I haven't had many issues with this ROM currently. I've been running it for five days. The battery life, it's average. Um, I really like the French Dream. I liked a lot of the added widgets that HTC since had uh, that was added in 2.0, whereas 1.0 didn't have as much. Um, I like the ability that, that you have the new Sense um, Hub, something that, I mean, HTC Hub, which allows you to download different things right from HTC. Another thing that, for some reason, Skyrate of Sense 4.0 is lacking. And then the big thing that a lot of people liked was the ability to connect your comp your phone to HTCSense.com. And if you guys don't know what that is, I will go ahead and load that. Let me spell it right. Sense.com. And basically, it is Mobile Me for your Android device. Um, it is free, unlike Mobile Me. All you need to do is have your device running, um, and it works fantastic. I have used it many times. Let me go ahead and enter my email address. Oops. Um, and as you can see, let's just load it. It is in beta. It's, it only supports tip tip technically three or four phones, but because my device is running a ported version of 2.0, you have the ability to add it. So this is pretty much what it is. I'm gonna block up my phone number up there. But guys, um, that's pretty much my impression of 2.2. What do we run? Time seven minutes. Um, very solid ROM. Very good. I give it about a nine out of ten. The next ROM I would like to talk about is Ink Does Sense 0.9.1. That's the version, uh, 0.9.1. I used it for about 25 minutes today, 30 minutes. It's very, it's laggy. It's not awful, um, but it's just it's not my cup of tea. They have stock, um, stock screen and just it's kind of hard to explain, but it's not what I like in a ROM. Someone might like it. All the links will be in the description to where you can download it and more information about it, but I'm not going to go too much into that. I don't really like it that much. I just put it up there because, you know, that was one of the ROMs that they used today, and I thought I might as well share it with you guys. Um, the next ROMs we're going to get into are the nonsense ROMs, which basically means vanilla version of Android. So um, a lot of you probably know CyanogenMod 7, CyanogenMod 6, the most popular versions of uh, vanilla. CyanogenMod 6 and CyanogenMod 7 are relatively the same. Obviously, CyanogenMod 7 has a lot of added um, a lot of added bonuses, and it's obviously running 2.3.3. Um, but, you know, if you're going to choose between CM7 and CM6 and you're not running a Drone Incredible, you might go check and make sure your device can handle the specifications that uh, Gingerbread requires. I want to say... Um, Probably you want to have at least an 800 megahertz processor with at least half a gig of RAM just to be on the safe side because uh, Gingerbread isn't a system hog, but it's nice to have those extra bits of what you might call it tech stuff. Um, CM7, I'll get into that right now. CM7, it just it is very vanilla. It's very nice. Uh, I did a review on those, so I'm not going to talk about that too much. But CM6 is Froyo. Um, you have the Froyo feel. It's basically what you'd get on the Nexus, the original Nexus, and CM7 is what you get on the Nexus S. So nothing is too much. Not, it's not really changed. CM7 and CM6 are added Cyanogen mods. Touch. You get free Wi-Fi tethering. Um, you know some Cyanogen mod six and seven um, tools like terminal and all that good stuff that gives you the ability to take your rooting experience to another level. You also have more advanced power controls and wireless controls and screen controls and system controls just in general. You can, like I said, take more advantage of the root and make your device do things that it can do easily. But for whatever reason, the developer put a notch on it and said, you're not going to do that. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about, besides CM6 and CM7, is um, 
Athena. I don't know too much about this. I know it is also a vanilla. It is Sky Raiders version of vanilla. It is Athena 3.5, I believe. It might be 2.5. Link will be in this description. Um, and it is very similar to Cyan Gemod 6. Athena 3.5 runs Froyo 2.2. It is a great ROM from what I hear. It's very stable. It's very reliable. It's boring as hell, but that's what you get with Cyanogen Mod 7. I mean, I mean Cyanogen Mod 6, and it's not boring once you customize it, but, you know, when you compare it to, um, <clears throat> if you were to take an Android running Cyanogen Mod 7, freshly installed, and then an Android running um, Warm Z.2.2, you know, a, a, you can easily make Cyanogen Mod is fun as uh, 2.2, but it takes a little work. Whereas if you don't want to do all that work, you can just go ahead and you can download 2.2 and then you can add your widgets. But for the most part, you have that feel that a lot of people like. Um, on the other word with Cyanogen Mod 6 and 7, all these ROMs apply to this, but I like to add um, AWD or a yeah, AWD Launcher Pro. Um, it adds a nice fun feel to it. And when you're dealing with the Sense ROMs, if you're going for the Sense feel, I don't really know why you would add a custom ROM. Because HTC Sense isn't a custom ROM. It's the, lo the lo launcher is HTC's launcher. So I don't know why you'd want to add a custom launcher if you're really going for the uh, HTC Sense feel. Um, we're going to wrap this up by talking about three kernels that I have dealt with and I have relatively good news on. Um, First two, we're going to talk about sense kernels, which basically means a sense kernel. Um, it's not the name of the kernel. Um, this isn't just like the technical name, but the easiest way to say it is, hey, it's Lou. Number eight and number nine are very good kernels. Um, they add tremendous battery life to your device. Um, when you're, you, if you use it um, like just on a regular basis, but not like heavy, heavy internet where you're on it for five hours at a time. Um, I can get a day, a day and a half when I'm running on Hey It's Lou number nine, eight with um, Sky Raider Sense 4.0, and Hey It's Lou number nine running um, on Warm Z 2.2. They're great ROMs. Um, they are Sense ROMs, so me that means you can't. I have all the names typed out, but I'm just gonna say Sense ROM because it's easiest for people to understand. They basically mean you can't flash this kernel on any other device. I mean any other ROM other than a Sense ROM. So that would be Athena 3.5, Warm Z, or Ink does. And I mean, obviously, if it, it's a good, there's other ones out there. Oh, Sky Raider, Sense 4.0, I didn't mean Athena. But obviously, there's other Sense ROMs, but those are the ones I was talking about. So if it comes with HTC Sense, if it's easy to understand, you can flash. Hey, it's Lou, number nine, number eight. If you want to go ahead and flash the other ones, go ahead. I'm not obviously responsible if your, your device is all screwed up. And then finally, Incredi Kernel. Um, I've used it for a bit when I was running Cyanogemod 7, and it was it did the same thing as Hey It's Looted for a Sense ROM. Very good battery life. Um, if you were to run Quadrant, if you were to run Quadrant, Incredi Kernel with Quadrant, Hey It's Loot, getting rid of the ROMs because a Cyanogemod is more vanilla, so Quadrant tends to be a bit higher because it's just not bogged down with all that crap. But um, and Quadrant is Quadrant standard for people that know it's a uh, device. It is a program that tests your device's specifications, how it handles GPU, CPU, and all that frames per second, and all that good stuff that nerds like me like. Um, so yeah, if you were to go in Credit Kernel versus Hey It's Lou, uh, Credit Kernel will get the notch just by a hair, but Hey It's Lou has better battery life. So um, if you're not going into heavy gaming and you know just internet and texting, I'd say go Hey It's Lou. You're not going to notice a significant system uh, performance loss, but at the same time, if you're a geek and a nerd and you like to show off your friends your high quadrant standard scores, but you want to maintain a relatively good battery life, I go with Incredi Kernel. You'll get, like I said, good battery life, not as good as Hey Slew. And obviously, if you want really good uh, quadrant um, test, the, the secret to getting a really good quadrant standard score, uh, I'll let this into you guys if you continue watching. Turn your device off, then kill all kill all system processes. Make sure you're running a good ROM that a either overclocks it or overvolts it, and then run it 20 times, and then you can just show your friends the highest one. I mean, I can hit 1300 on my Droid Incredible when I'm running it overvolted, over vault, overclocked on some kick-ass kernel, 
CM7, I can hit 1400, 1500, but um, typically I hit around 1200 just because I don't really care about my system preferences, I mean my system speed too much. I use my phone for business and texting and email and anchor birds, but so I'm not going to be going hardcore in any games. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it was long. I know it was painful. Um, if you like this, go hit the subscribe button. It's free and it will really help me out. Um, go ahead and check out newtonshead.com. They're giving away an iPad. It's awesome. All I gotta do is follow them on Twitter and like their Facebook page, and you will be instantly entered to win a qual um, instantly entered to win a iPad. You don't even have to do anything else other than that. Um, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad. Each person you tell, you get an extra entry, and they will be giving one away. We'll be giving one away. I am their public creations officer. We will be giving one away once we hit 3,500 likes. And right now, we are approximately at 2,500. And once we actually, we actually have a small giveaway going, 2,500 likes, we're giving away a Newton's Head poster and stickers, which isn't like, woo, but it's kind of cool. So, guys, go check them out. If you have any questions about this tutorial, let me know. I've kept you for long enough. For Apple Fanatic, this is me saying peace, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, go check it out. Newton's Head, because you know you want it, you know you love me, and thanks for watching.